Welcome back to Plowman's Backyard and today we're just going over um, people have been requesting a newer updated version of how to use a 16 egg Amazon incubator and I thought for this video I would do a start to finish video. So I'm actually going to take you through the very beginning steps of kind of getting this incubator set up and we're going to go through the whole 21 days and I'm going to show you how to use this Amazon 16 egg incubator. Stick around. So when getting your incubator, you should have a manual that comes with it, uh, a tips paper. It comes also with a squirt bottle, which I tend, I don't really use it that often. I find we have um, enough humidity around here that just using this is sufficient enough. I have a harder time actually keeping the humidity levels down in this incubator. So I, I use the bottle more than I do use the sprayer, the spritzer. Um, this bottle, like I said, it comes with, I, I don't know if it's millimeters, but it comes in 20, 60, and 100. I don't know if you can see on there. There's, anyway, there's measurements there on the side. So when I start my incubator, I usually put anywhere from the 20, I think it's 20 is here, to 40. I put that in one section on the side, and that seems to be enough for at least about three days, and then I'll add a little bit more. I add pretty much a full bottle around the 18th day, 19th day, when it's lockdown day. That's when you want your humidity levels high. Another thing that you wanna make sure that you do when starting up your incubator is you need the styrofoam on. We've had people say that they have accidentally um, thrown out the styrofoam or they weren't sure that it actually came with the incubator or part of the packaging. It definitely is part of the incubator. We found that it, when we removed the styrofoam, our temperature decreased quite a bit. It holds in a lot of that heat and the eggs need that heat um, for at least, well, the first 18 days. The temperature is really important to keep those eggs nice and warm. So the first thing you wanna do when setting up your incubator is that you want it to run for a minimum of 24 hours. And that is basically just to get the temperature stabilized so that when you put your eggs in, it's already warm in there and it's not gonna fluctuate a lot by adding your eggs because your eggs are not gonna be the temperature that it is in the incubator and it's going to change the temperature a little bit in there. So making sure that's heated up is gonna help um, stabilize that temperature a little bit quicker. I have found with trialing out um, the first few times we use this incubator that the incubator itself isn't necessarily hot enough like warm enough on the inside so the manual says to put it at 38 um, degrees celsius that's what the temperature reads on this it's in celsius we found that when you measure the temperature on the inside of the incubator it actually is more around the 37 mark so I like to keep this incubator, at least ours, around the 38.3, and it fluctuates between 38.3 and 38.0, which on the inside, it's reading closer to 38 and 37.9. Adjust your temperature um, to what you see fit. You can use another measuring device by putting a thermostat in the incubator so that you can kind of figure out how to balance your temperature. A lot of people have said that their temperature is off quite a bit, so there are ways of working around that. Just turn your temperature up a little bit, maybe make sure, sometimes I put a towel over a good portion of the incubator, obviously not enough to block the holes on the side where we add the water, and we'll get to that in a moment, or not blocking this vent on top here um, because we do need to open it now and then. So sometimes just keeping a towel or a blanket around that will also help keep some of that heat in and keep the temperature up. But I have found that around 38.3, setting it for that has been really good and we've had really good outcomes with our hatchings with it. The beginning stages around day one to day 18, you want the humidity level around 60%. A lot of people wonder, how do we measure the humidity level? Because there is no humidity reader on this incubator. It just comes with the thermostat for the temperature. So you can buy like, a, I think it's called a hygrometer um, and it can read the humidity levels. So what I have done is I came across these uh, humidity packs and what they do is they actually regulate temperatures. 
And the reason why I got this, I wasn't able to get a hygrometer at the time when we were looking last year, but I came across these and I got a package of them. About I think there's about 10 in a pack. And what I do with these, because it reads 62 and I want the humidity to be around 60, this actually helps to decrease my humidity levels in the incubator. That being said, you do not need to have this. And I just add this from days one to 18, take it out when I take my rollers out when it's lockdown time. And then I increase my humidity levels just by adding a full bottle of this water. Now, when you're adding water to your incubator, I like to add warm water. Between days one and 18, I might add about 20 to 40, I think it's milliliters of water, once every three days. Now you need to check and see how the humidity level is. Um, if you find that there's a little bit too much moisture and fogging up in there, it means your humidity level is high. And a way to get rid of some of that humidity level is also opening up this vent and that's just gonna allow the humidity to escape. Humidity levels in your incubator can change depending on your location. We have quite a bit of humidity levels here where we live. So our humidity level is high already, uh, like in the atmosphere. So it's going to be high in the incubator as well. Now, if you live in like a lower um, humidity level area, you can actually do something called like a dry hatch, which means you don't need to add water to your incubator until it's time to lock down during the hatching stages. They definitely need water during that time. It helps soften that shell so that they can break through easily. But we here, we're doing a wet hatch, which means I'm adding water to the bottom of my incubator, but I don't need to add very much because the humidity level is already somewhat high. This incubator also comes with rollers. I'm gonna show you in a minute on the inside because I have started uh, my eggs about three days ago. So I'm gonna minimize opening this up just yet. It has a little um, mesh um, tray that is there. So when we take the rollers out, when the chicks hatch, they have a little cage that they go on. Now I find that, that the mesh tray has a little bit too large of holes. And I just want to um, decrease my chances of having the chicks have spayed legs. So what I do just to help it along is I've been out and I've got this from a dollar store. And it's just like a little sticky tray mat. It goes, you know, maybe in your kitchen cupboards to prevent slipping. And it's just enough. We haven't had any problems with our chicken's legs or feet. We found this to be really good. It's non-slip, very little. And we have found this very helpful um, for the first day or two when the chicks hatch. Someone has asked why I take the rollers out and not leave them. That is because when they're hatching, there's a lot of eggshells in there. There's a lot of them sometimes hatching at the same time and those rollers just have them slipping around and I really just want to prevent them from getting injured at all. You'll notice on the side here, there's some little holes here and that is actually where I add the water. There's some little troughs in there um, that there's actually two sections. One is a larger spot and one is a smaller spot. I tend to use the larger one for most of the time and I add the water in there, the warm water in through these little holes and I do that about every three days. Now you may wonder why I have this duct tape on here and why it's cut. I have found that it's quite handy to have, and I'll show you, don't wanna move these eggs around too much, but it just allows me to open up so that I can check in and check on my eggs and I can monitor how the eggs are, if there's any hatching going on. Our first time doing the incubation, I wasn't sure if the eggs were actually turning with the automatic egg turner. So it was a nice way that I could open up a little spot and just see the eggs roll. And how I managed to do that was I just put a little mark on one of the eggs by the side where I had um, cut the styrofoam and I could see that different times when I'd look in, that little mark on that egg was in different spots. So I knew that the rollers were working. That it is hard to see and it's very slow, but it does actually work. The rollers do work. Now I'll show you how to set up your incubator with the, the settings manual on here. So as you can see this little spot here, this is for candling. It's a little light. Uh, you can see it right there. We have used it. It does work, but they, it is hard to see. And I've had um, other people have better success with different type of candlers, but it is here. It's part of the incubator and 
we were able to see quite a bit. It does have to be pretty dark, so make sure all your lights and stuff are off. But again, if you stick around for the video, we are gonna show you how everything works. And around day five to 10, we will be candling and we're gonna show you how that works too. For setting up your temperature, it's simple. Um, you press the set button. You can move your temperature up or you can move it down by the um, plus minus section. Like I said, for the first um, one to seven days, I like to keep it around 38.3. It seems to work well for us with that temperature. Another thing is this incubator comes factory preset to specific settings and I'm just going to show you I found that I've used the settings that come with the incubator and I haven't had a problem with it in the manual see here on this page it'll go over some of those uh, factory pre settings and how to do it and how to set up so it says here um, that the egg setting cycle is the F1 and the egg turning cycle is F2 so I'm just going to show you how to do that just to get an idea of how to use these buttons on the front all right, so we're just gonna to go to the egg setting cycle and we're just gonna hold that set button down. And now we're gonna try and find the F1 button. There's the F1, we're gonna press set again. And it says 90. So this is how often your eggs are gonna turn. So every 90 minutes, it's factory preset to turn your eggs every 90 minutes. Now we're gonna check out the egg turning time and we're gonna press that set button and hold again. And we're gonna look for that F2. Right there, and we're gonna press hold again. And it says 200. So this means that every 90 minutes, these eggs are gonna roll for 200 seconds at a time. Some people may say that every 90 minutes is a bit too much. That works out to being 16 times these eggs are turned a day. So you can adjust that by changing with um, your manual setting here. I didn't do that. We've had good hatch rates, so I'm not gonna bother changing something that's working, but you can go ahead. If you feel it's too much, you do have the option to change that there. So another thing you can do to get the eggs to turn manually is you press and hold the both plus and minus sign. And that right light here is showing you that the eggs are now turning and I'm doing it manually. So you can have it set that you can go and just turn them how often you want and when you want to instead of just the preset. So these two bright lights are letting you know that one, the egg is turning and two, the heat element is on and heating up the incubator again. Now, if you didn't get one of these manuals in with your incubator, which we've had a lot of people um, reaching out to us asking for the manual because they didn't get one or they got it in a different language, we do have an English copy here. And if you do not have one and would like to get a copy of the manual, just leave a comment down below and let us know and we can try and get you a PDF version of this manual and send it to you. So what it does come with, it tells you how to use those manual um, settings that you can change. So it also does come with these parameter tables, which gives good detail on how to keep your temperature at certain days. So I'm doing chickens. So like I said, days one to seven, I having it set it for about 38, 38.3. Days eight to 13, I have it set at about 38.0. 14 to 18, 37.9, and day 19 and later, 37.6. It also tells you what the humidity um, parameter should be during those days, how often you should be spraying and adding water, and when you should stop turning your eggs. So this is actually a really good thing to have. Like I said, leave a comment down below and we'll try and get you a copy of this um, as quick as we can. Now I'll just show you what's going on inside. Like I said, we have added our 16 eggs to this incubator. One thing is with this incubator, you don't want to open the lid very often. So I like to not open it for at least five days to keep the heat in there. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of eggs in there. They do seem to be rolling just fine. Ah, now that beeping just lets you know that your temperature went down and you need to increase it back up because you have a loss of heat in the incubator. 
Many people have commented before on what to do and how to shut off that beeper because in my last video on my how to use the Amazon 16 egg incubator, I had that beeping for quite a bit of the time and I do apologize, but I'll show you just how to do that. We'll get it going again. And it's really simple. All you need to do is press that minus button. Ah. Another thing you're going to get when you get your incubator are these, this extra cord, um, kind of got like these little alligator claw thingy majigs. Anyways, people have been asking what this is for, and this is actually for if you lose power, uh, anytime during your incubation, you're not going to have heat and you're going to actually ruin your hatch. So they actually put the, include this in your incubator. Um, if you lose power, um, you would just disconnect um, your AC adapter and you would add this in place of it. So if you need to attach this to something, it can actually be attached to somehow to a solar panel if, you're, if you are off grid. Or if you have lost power, just have these little clamps go on to a nice little maybe 12 volt battery, um, maybe an ATV battery. These are just come in handy. If you lose power, you're going to wreck your hatch. So make sure that you have something else on hand in case that happens. So I've got my water here. Um, again, I'll just show you if you can see it or not. There's a 20 mark there. There's a 40 and it goes up to the 60 and 100. I'm just going to add about 20 milliliters of water into this incubator. And I do that just through this little hole here. And again, this is warm. Uh, tap water that I'm adding. During lockdown time, days 18 and after, I'm adding a whole bottle multiple times a day. So it's been about three days, so I thought I should add it a little bit more water because we are wet hatching. Well, it's day 10 now and we are going to be candling these eggs. So one reason why you want to do this is so that you can see how the development is going. And basically today we should definitely be seeing veining, which we did see when we candled some on day five, but day 10, you should actually start seeing the embryo, the, the eye should be developed. You'll see a, a dark black dot. And that is a good indication that there's a lot of growth there. So if there's any, eggs in there that don't have any veining, no black dots. We're just gonna discard those and take those out. There's no need to have them in here. And it's really fun to do. So let's get to candling these eggs. Well, I just pressed this um, little light bulb setting here and it brought on the candler. So as you can see here, the candler does work well on this incubator, but for the sake of the video and so that you can see what is going on inside the egg, we're gonna switch over to our iPhone flashlight. So there is a little chick in there. Um, it's moving around on its own. Um, it's really cool. I can't quite tell where the eye is, but the eye at this point would be a very black dot, which it very well could be this here. But the chick is quite developed. It's just really small at this point. And we've got the air sac down at the bottom where the bright red is. Mm. Oh, did you see that? So there's definitely a chicken here you can see the large vein there there's the air sac down here and this I believe would be the eye lots and lots of movement in here Well, we have reached day 19 and you know what that means? It is lockdown day, which means that we need to take the eggs out, get the rollers out of the machine and lock it down for three to four days till hatch should be about 21 days, give or take. Sometimes I've had them hatch right on day 19 and other days I've had them hatch on day 22. So now I'm just going to go through how we prepare to lock down, which is really very simple. It takes a few minutes. So I'm going to begin by removing the eggs. Now we have a lot less eggs in here than when we started and that's because we did some candling. We remove the eggs as we go. Now we're just going to remove the rollers. Now I've had people ask why do I remove the, the, uh, the rollers for me? It's just easier to remove the rollers 
but you can, if by using the manual, you can go into the settings and actually stop the rollers from moving. In my experience though, removing the rollers is a good idea because you don't really want the chicks hatching from the eggs onto these rollers and getting things like spade legs or any issues because they're really delicate when they first come out. So why have the hindrance of having these in? The other thing that I'm going to do, I'm just gonna remove this and I've got my humidity pack. I'm removing that now. So this little tray that you see in your incubator that comes with the incubator, I don't really like the size of the holes, mainly because the chicks are so delicate and small when they come out that I'm just afraid of their feet getting caught or something. I wanna prevent any injuries as possible. You don't have to do this, but what I like to do is just take one of those non-slip mats. You can get them at the dollar store, just about any home hardware store and they're more for your cupboards and plates that they don't slip around and I'm just going to cut this to size just about the same size as this maybe a little bit smaller and I'm going to put the tray and this on top well I've just cut this non-slip mat and I'm just going to put it directly on this and as you can see I did do it a little bit smaller than the actual tray and we're just going to insert this now into the incubator Next, we're gonna put the eggs back into the incubator. So we have 10 eggs still in the incubator. So the next thing we want to do is we wanna keep track of the humidity level inside this incubator. Up till now, we've kept the humidity at about 60%, which is great. And during the last three to four days of incubation, you want the humidity level to be around 70%. It goes in between 70 and 80, that's fine, but we just need a higher humidity level reading uh, during these last few days of incubation. So now I'm just going to add the hygrometer into the incubator. And all I've done here is just, I've just cut a little slit here in the styrofoam, put a little piece of duct tape, and that's just so I can see what's going on with the hygrometer here. I have removed the whole styrofoam before in the past just during this lockdown phase. By doing that, it actually reduced the temperature of the incubator quite significantly and I could not get the, the temperature back to where it needed to be. So it is very important to keep the styrofoam on during this part of the incubation. However, during the hatching days, we did end up removing this uh, styrofoam um, just during the day when they were all hatching and they seemed to do just fine. But like I said, from day 19 to 21, we're going to keep this on and I'm going to put this hygrometer right here so that I can monitor the humidity level inside the machine. As you can see, we have the hygrometer right here and I can easily see the percentage of humidity level inside the incubator. Now what I'm going to do is add warm water and I'm just going to put it into both spots because we need the humidity level to increase at least by 10%. So now we just want to reduce our temperature to 37.6. Set. And this is going to be the remaining temperature until the hatching of the eggs. So one of the reasons why we want to increase our humidity level during this part of the incubation is because we're trying to help the eggs to be prepared for hatching. So having a little bit higher of humidity levels is going to add a little bit more moisture into the air and soften those eggs. I have heard of people lifting the lid and spraying inside the machine to add humidity. I do not recommend doing that. It does increase the humidity level. And the reason why I do not recommend doing that is because if you do have a chick that is, you know, pecking its way through maybe a little hole or maybe even a larger hole by spraying and accidentally spraying inside that egg you could actually drown that chick so having a good humidity level is important and you don't want to spray on the eggs so adding the warm water into the sides of the machines where the hole is here is your best way to increase the humidity level Another thing, if you're finding that you have too much humidity and you want to release some, you can just open up this vent and allow some of that moisture to release. So it is recommended to open this vent about four times a day for about 15 minutes at a time. So another reason why keeping the humidity level up during this phase of incubation is because they can start to hatch 
and they could actually become almost like a vacuum sealed chick. So what will happen if there's not enough moisture, if it's lower than 70, these chicks could start pecking through and the little membrane or sac that they need to break through will actually dehydrate and cause them not to hatch and die also. So keeping and, and maintaining that 70% or a little bit higher is really important. Well, we've ended up bypassing even the hatch day. So these birds hatched, I want to say about a week ago and they're doing really, really well. You can see this little guy is quite happy. I'm pretty sure we have a rooster here. Well, thank you for watching another Plowman's Backyard incubation video. Um, if you haven't seen our other videos yet, go and check those out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go and subscribe as we have a comparison video from the um, Amazon egg incubator to the Hoobivator incubator coming up, as well as a frequently asked questions about this specific Amazon egg incubator. Also, if you like anything or wondering where we got anything in this video that we use for our chicks I'll leave links in the description below you can click on those links and purchase through Amazon where we got our specific items used in this video and we also get a small commission from this so help support our channel by going on those links and purchasing your equipment through our affiliate links